a VPN in broad technical terms is a virtual private network. So it's a way for you to connect, to create your own network, your own private network, but beyond the barriers of a physical location. So let's say, let's say I have my phone and my computer in my house that are both connected to my router, and I want to send information from my computer to my phone. Do I have to go outside of my house, like I'm talking about on the network, and come back? No, I can just stay within my private network, within my house, to send information from one of my devices to the other. However, if I build a virtual private network and I want to send, let's say, information from my work to my home, and I build a virtual private network between those, it's just going from my home to my directly to my work. It's not, let's say, routing through the regular internet before getting there. So that's the difference. That's how you create a virtual private network. And what a lot of people uh, use it for, it's, uh, let's say you can use it for, let's say, uh, connecting to your work without, let's say, uh, administration access rights. So let's say a lot of companies do this so that the firewall doesn't block the entry because uh, it just shows that it's, it's, it's part of the same network. So it's not an external request. But all we're going to talk about the usage that you use it for to route your traffic before reaching a destination. So let's say I'm connecting to Facebook.com, but I don't want Facebook.com to know that it's me, which in the case of Facebook.com might not be the best idea because I probably have an account with my name. So I can do use a VPN, which a VPN means that I can connect through a server as if it's in my own house, but it's it's a virtual private network. And then that server connects to Facebook for me. So Facebook only sees that that server is connecting to Facebook. It doesn't see that I'm making a, a connection to, to Facebook. So basically, you can see the image here that this is kind of a meme, but it, it is kind of how it works. This is how a VPN works. You There's just someone in the middle that makes that seems to be the one that made the request from the destination point of view. So your address, your IP address is never seen. It's just the server who knows your IP address because you're, you're making the request. So you got to trust the server's promise not to betray you. And you're paying him five for most services, five to $10 a month. So what happens if someone comes to the server's offices and offers them five hundred thousand dollars to see your activity and let's say a few more users of the company well the company just accept to share your data with uh, with the, the the person who came in and in a lot of cases they they just get bought out and they just sell you out so you're still trusting one other person not to betray your promise and you're only paying him five to ten dollars a month. So you can also roll, roll your own, let's say, VPN, your own server that you host somewhere, and then you route your traffic through that. Uh, and here's this website that does it for bitcoins without any sort of identification called hostforcoins.net. So, and that's done by a, a team that works on Bitcoin, uh, the normal team. So. Uh, I think they, they have a, a lot of integrity, but even them uh, are not offering the VPN service. What they offer you is to run a server and on that server, you can run your own VPN. So it's a little, let's say, trusted, but still, they still have their hands on the physical hardware, right? Or you can also subscribe to a VPN service. You shouldn't use a free one. The free ones are almost always uh, selling your data or using it for other purposes. So how do you choose a VPN provider? Here's a website, that one privacy site.net slash simple VPN comparison. And, and I'm going to, I'm going to share the slides on the meetup group. Uh, and I'm going to also share the slides on the chat towards the end of the conversation so that you can follow every link that I'll be presenting here. Uh, and any other information that I've shared. So, and I'm going to go on that website in a second. 
the two my two picks and of that website and other websites that I've seen are IVPN. It's based in Gibraltar. It's eight thirty four dollars a month if you buy the annual package. And Movad is probably the one with the best reputation, but and it's a little bit less expensive, five point forty four dollars a month on the annual package once again, but it's based in Sweden, which some people might not like because it's a 14 eyes jurisdiction. 14 eyes, it's an intelligence group by many governments around the world that uh, share information between themselves and have some kind of intelligence rules between themselves. So some people don't like to be, to have a VPN on some jurisdiction of the 14 eyes because they have, let's say, some more rules and are more inclined to spy on companies and, and their citizens. So, but still, Movad has maintained a very good reputation through the years, uh, and uh, which is very rare for, for most companies here uh, in, in the, this sphere. So here you can see that that website that I mentioned, Simple VPN Comparison, um, that one privacy site.net. So you see, you see that most most uh, VPNs here presented are all red, most of them. So um, and the, the the factors to consider are like where is it located? Is it logging the information? Um, is it uh, does it have good activism? Is it let's like, say funding privacy activities? Is it open source? Things like that. Is it also Sometimes the, the server might not, the company might not be, um, might not have bad intentions, but they might have bad configuration and security. So let's say, let's take the case of NordVPN. NordVPN got hacked a few months ago, like two, three months ago. And now a hacker has all their, all the information that was logged, that was saved of the users, right? So if more than they say was saved, well, the hacker might be in possession of the information of the people that were using NordVPN. So there you see that it's also important for the provider to be extremely secure because they're holding to precious uh, information. So here I, I, I went through this and I got uh, IVPN and MoveAd were the two bigger, better picks, but there's also like very more advanced and technical comparison of all the VPN providers as well. So that you can see this is way more extensive and goes point by point. So I won't be spending more time on this, but I, I advise you to go through this if you want to make your own opinion on what's the, the best VPN out there. So movad.net uh, is the, the one that I'd say I advise the most, but keep in mind it's based in Sweden and might not be uh, the, the, the best jurisdiction.